صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this year the year of the reappearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala farajo sharif with the blessing of another Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wal anadahum. We ask and we beg Allah sincerely that He makes us among His companions and His sincere soldiers with the blessing of another salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wal anadahum. Qala al Imam al Mahdi. عجل الله تعالى فرج الشريف وفي ابنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله لي أسوة حسنة. A group of people they had an argument between amongst themselves about the Khalifa and the Imam after Imam Hassan al Askari عليه السلام and they wrote in a letter was written by the Imam and was delivered to them. It's a lengthy letter. Within that letter, there's a statement that we began our uh, lecture with it. Imam Mahdi Ajrullah Ta'ala for the Sharif states, in daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa is a role model for me and the best role model. Uswatun Hasana wa fi ibnat Rasulullah in the daughter of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa there is a role model for me. Our beloved Imam, Imam Mahdi ajlallah ta'ala faraju sharif says that the daughter of Rasulullah is the best role model for me. The Imam of our time is saying. What do we learn from this statement? And there's another hadith from another imam that says, نَحْنُ حُجَجُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْخَلْقِ We are Allah's proof upon His creation. وَأُمُّنَا فَاطِمَ حُجَّةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْنَا And our mother Fatima is Allah's proof upon us. It shows the status of Fatima to Zahra, salamu Allah alayha, and what we need to appreciate. So, taking her as our role model, since she is the role model for Imam Mahdi Ajlallah Ta'ala Farj Sharif, us as the follower of Imam Mahdi, we have to take her as our role model too. Last night, we discussed an aspect of her life, by, and we discussed about how she defended the Imam of her time, Imam Ali Alayhi Salam, and the wilaya of Amir al-Mumina Ali ibn Abi Talib Alayhi Salam, and we discussed it. 
We mentioned many action plans, uh, just as a reminder for us to read Khutbah al-Fadakiyya and learn from it, and also the Khutbah uh, that she gave when the woman, women of Ansar came to her, and she also talked to them. That's another sermon. It won't take both of them together. It won't take more than an hour from us. But line by line by line, there are lessons that we can learn from this lecture and for this sermon that she gave. So, right now and tonight, we will bring another aspect of her glorious life and his holy, her holy life. And that is the relationship that was between her, her relationship with her husband, Last night, we discussed about guardianship and the wilayah of Amir al muminin Tonight, we're discussing the relationship with the husband, wife and husband relationship, and how they have to establish this important foundation, the foundation of marriage, which unfortunately we see within the Muslim community and non-Muslim community, the divorce rates are increasing. Why? Because they are not applying the teachings of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad And the best family and the best role model that we can take as a wife and a husband is the life of, number one, Sayyidina Khadija alayha, and Rasulullah Muhammad and Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, and Fatima al-Zahra We have to keep this in mind. When we read the history, when we read the stories of their lives, we have to focus, we have to zoom in and try to draw as many action plans as, as possible. We read this hadith uh, in Bihar al-Anwar, volume 43, page 191. When Fatima al-Zahra alayha, was on her deathbed and she was telling her will and what she wanted Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, to do after her departure of this world. She talks and then she told him, Ya ibn Am, ma ahittani kathibah. Let's just pause. Ya ibn, two words, Am, three words. What does it teach us? She is discussing a matter, a very important matter, a very important issue. And the last statement she's about to, amongst the last statements she's about to make, Yabna Am, the respect that is there between this wife and this husband. She doesn't call him by his name Ali or Ali. No, Yabna Am, oh my cousin. Look at the respect. Teaches us what? Both spouses, when they call one another within the house, they should call one another with respect. Within the uh, Arab culture, this is something very beautiful. They typically call the, the wife calls the husband and the husband calls the wife by the Abu or Um. For example, my son is Rida, my oldest son. My wife calls me Abu Rida, the father of Rida. And I call her Um Rida the mother of Rida. Or, for example, my mother calls my father Um Mustafa or Abu Mustafa. This is the respect rather than just calling the name. Is that respect that is established between people and needs to be there. When that respect comes, after that respect come many other uh, elements that will strengthen the foundation of this marriage. So that's one action plan we can learn. Ma ahittani kathibah. Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa is telling Amir al-Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, You have not known me to be a liar. Wala kha'ineh. And you have not found me, you don't, you have, you don't, you have not known me to be a liar nor a betrayer. And I never disagreed or had a different opinion with you since I lived with you. وَلَا خَائِنَ وَلَا خَالَفْتُكَ مُنذُ عَاشَرْتَلِي Since we lived it together, you, don't, you, you, don't, you have not known me to be a liar, a betrayer, and having a disagreement or different opinion with you. Let us focus a little bit within these three elements. Number one, lying. 
Unfortunately, we see <coughs> within the marriage couple during their engagement, as the first couple of days, maybe a month or two, they will lie to one another about things that they are hiding from their own personality, from their own characteristics, from them, their belongings, and so on and so forth. Oh, I can do this and this and this. I will do such and such for you. I will make you the happiest person on earth. With me, you will have the best life ever, and so on and so forth of the lies. I will buy you this. I will buy you this. I will buy you this. I will do you. I will do this for you. I will take you here. I will take you there. Same thing for the other partner, other spouse. The the start of the relationship is based on lies. And this foundation, which is based on lies, it won't survive. It won't be long before this foundation will be destroyed. Based on lies. Fatima Zahra Salamullah tells Amir Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, in these last statements that she's making, you have not known me to be a liar. No matter what happens, we should not lie. As far as the partners are concerned wife and husbands spouses should by no mean lie to one another because that one lie opens the door to another lie opens the door to another lie and to another lie and another lie and it will destroy the foundation of this marriage i want to we can talk about lie and its effect and uh, how it will destroy we want to get through the rest of the talk inshallah wala khaina and I never betrayed you. Well, you might say, well, Sheikh, of course, I, haven't, I have not betrayed my spouse, my wife, or husband. But if I message someone from the opposite gender, and my message gets a little bit more personal, well, I am betraying that person. Betrayal is not only going and being with that partner, with that opposite gender in haram, uh, physically, no, a text message, a Facebook message, a WhatsApp message can be uh, considered to be a sign of betraying the other spouse that we have. Again, we have to be very careful. These elements will not let for this foundation to stay on its own feet and for it to grow and grow and be a foundation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds dearly. وَلَا خَالَفْتُكَ مُنْذُ عَاشَرْتَنِي I have not disagreed with you or had any different of opinion since we lived together. Around 9 to 10 years they lived together. Amir Mumi, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam and Fatima to Zahra alayhi alayhi, they lived together for 9 or 10 years. Not more than that. May Allah curse those people who did not leave these couple to live their life happily. And they came and they destroyed this family. This amazing, this phenomenal, this gorgeous couple that they would live together happily based on Allah's, Allah's satisfaction. They didn't allow them to have that happiness and satisfaction in a prosperous life. Different of opinion. How many disagreements we get within a couple's life that we see people come to my office when I was in Imam Ali Center in Virginia, I was the resident alim. Weekly basis, I had cases. Wife said, I said such and such, and the husband said, I, I wanted to do it this way, and she wanted to do it this way. We wanted to go this place. I said, let's go to my parents' house. She said, no, let's go to my parents' house. I said, my, my parents' house. I said, let's go to vacation to this state. She said, no, let's go to this state. How about we buy this? She said, no. I said, yes. He said, no, and on and on and on. I remember one time I had a scenario. A, a couple came to my, uh, my office from a Eight o'clock Maghrib time until two o'clock in the morning, I was keep just listening. He said this and I said this and she said this and I said that and disagreement on every little things. There was a disagreement. Why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't we do it this way? Why didn't we do it this way? And on and on the discussion went on and I really got dizzy and headache for listening to this kind of conversation. So if we want to build a life, a prosperous life, a loving family, let us apply these teachings. Number one, 
action plan will be for the future spouse that they are, inshallah will get married soon and those who are already married Ibn Am, addressing one another with respect number two never lie to one another number three never betray one another number four never have disagreement or different of opinion if you disagree with that person we go there say okay inshallah we can do, do this or there's another option we always can have a good communication in conveying our message to be able to get our point across we don't have to argue and disagree and yell and scream and na'udhu billah god forbid god forbid get physical this is the option this is the option this is good this is good this option has pros and cons and this option has pros and cons it's up to you wife tells the husband and husband tells the wife both Look at this family, how they will survive and how they will have a loving, a prosperous, and beautiful marriage life. So that's her side. She's telling to Amir al Mu'minah Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Right now, Imam Ali alayhi salam is replying. Faqala alayhi salam, Imam Ali alayhi salam replies, Ma'adallah, I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anti, a'lamu billah. He's bringing characteristics of Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayhi. Number one, anti a'lamu billah wa abar wa atqa wa akram wa ashaddu khawfan min Allah. Five beautiful characteristics of Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha. Beautiful. Let's go one by one and draw action plans from each one of them. Number one, Anti a'lamu billah. The most knowledge when it comes to knowing Allah, you have it, Fatima al Zahra. You have the most knowledge when it comes to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have the most knowledge. Anti a'lamu billah. So, since Imam Mahdi ajallah ta'ala, Faraj Sharif, gave us a guideline that for me, Imam Mahdi, I'll take. Fatima to Zahra as my role model. We have to take also Imam Mahdi and Fatima to Zahra as our role model. Well, one of the characteristics of Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah Aliha, that she has the most knowledge when it comes to the knowing Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Shouldn't we learn from her? I remember I was discussing with a, a youth of our community around the age of 24, 25. And I asked him, how did you come to conclusion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists? He replied, and I told him, who told you, who introduced you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes? His reply shocked me, surprised me, mesmerized me. It got me off guard, he said. My grandmother, when, I, when she used to put me into sleep, she told me that God is one. I believe God is one. God exists and God is one. That's where I got my belief from. In this day and age, I told him, Inshallah, you'll soon get married. And your son, you will have a son or daughter. You, have a, you will have a child. And this child of yours will go to the school and will learn the evolution theory and the Big Bang theory and all the theories that they try to negate and all the misconceptions that are there about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his attributes, his essence. We see, what can you tell them? Can you tell them that, well, my grandmother told me that Allah is one and I believe Allah is one? You can't. You have to have a logical reasoning. You have to have a rational statement to tell them that God exists because of so and so. Because of these reasons that are rational, that are logical. Believe in Allah. We'll, so what does this belief will do? After we will come, inshallah, we'll talk about it. That How can we increase belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And knowledge of Allah, how can we increase knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his existence that he is he exists and we can prove it how how can we know that what is the level of our knowledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from on a scale of one to hundred if I can have a discussion 
and a dialogue with an atheist, do I have enough information, enough tools to prove him that Allah exists and he is the creator of this universe? universe and he is one believing in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the first pillar of us Muslim reminding ourselves of the five pillars of us the followers of Ahlul Bayt pillars of Islam Asul al-Din Khamsa five Al-Awwal Tawheed believing in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number two Adala believing in justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala third prophethood Nubuwa fourth Imam <coughs> Believing the 12 disciples of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And the fifth, day of judgment, qiyamah. Do we believe in it? Do we have enough knowledge that we can prove to an atheist about our belief and can be a convincing argument and convincing message that we can convey to them? Well, I don't have any information. Even my own information is shaky. If I hear a doubt or two or three, a misconception or here or two, my belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shake because I don't have enough knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attribute a person comes to me and asks me well if God exists and he is just why babies are born with deficiency why they have to suffer if God exists and he is just why we see poor countries people dying from pov poverty bloodshed killing why so much injustice happening in this world if God is there and God exists why he doesn't do something about it do we have an answer for it? Do we have an answer based on Quran and the narrations of Ahl-Bayt and a logical reasoning, logical and rational reasoning we can provide? The answers are all there within the books of Ahl-Bayt They have taught us Kitab al-Ihtijaj, for example, if you take it, or Kitab Usul al-Kafi, if you take it. You will see the dialogue that was there between the Imams of Ahlul Bayt with atheists, with, a, with agnostics, with the person, who, idol worshippers, how Ahlul Bayt brought beautiful, simple, rational explanation of existence of Allah, about existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes and his uh, existence and oneness. We have to read. We have to put time to read and educate ourselves and our relatives and our families and wife and husband our kids when the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases we believe in him and that belief will strengthen our ability to overcome the challenges that we face in life i'm sitting and in front of me is the dome of the shrine of Abu abdullah al hussein what an honor allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with we see the belief of knowledge and the belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart of Abu Abdullah al Hussein on his hand while he was trying to convey this message and trying to get them to take Ali al Azgar to water this six month old infant. An arrow comes and cuts from jugular vein, from neck, completely cuts the vein, jugular vein of Ali al Azgar, and the blood is gushing down. And Imam takes the blood and he throws one handful to the sky and the other handful and he put it on his blessed beard he said this is this becomes easy for me why because Allah sees it when the belief is there when the faith is there based on knowledge we see how they were patient no matter what calamities befell them no matter what challenges befell them they were firm believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the narrator tells us the more challenges and difficulties about Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam and tragedy he faced on the day of Ashura, the more he faced challenged, the more his face would be illuminated. Because he says, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will never lose hope. It, when it increases, we'll, we will appreciate and worship him. We will feel in love with supplication and prayers. If I see my prayers are not on time, if I see my prayers I'm praying and my mind is everywhere except my salah because I have not fell in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There won't be by that knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in Allah subhanahu and, and, and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there won't be no more anxiety. There will be no more hopelessness. There won't be any more despair within us. We're always hopeful that there is a way. The re relief is it's coming. Somewhere I'm going to be relieved. 
I just need to be patient. Allah is testing my patient. Allah with this is testing me to, so He can elevate me or He's cleansing me from my sins because He wants me to get closer to Him. That's a beauty. So no more anxiety. Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we increase it? How can we increase it? Number one, by reciting Holy Quran and reading verse by verse and appreciating the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst our hands. Unfortunately, we see some people, they dig in so much into the books of this poet and that poet and this philosopher and that philosopher and this arif and that arif and this scholar and that scholar. They dig in so much to, wow, look at this line of poetry from this famous, famous, famous poet. How much is talking good? And they try to analyze it and they have convention, convention about it, about a poet. But we don't see conventions about Quran. We don't see them diving into the knowledge of Quran, holy Quran, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have memorized all the lines of poetry of giving poets, east and west. The philosophers' quotation from them on their within their lecture, one quote after another quote, one quote after another quote. Where is Quran? Where is the hadith of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So that's number one, how we increase our knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and based on that knowledge, our belief and faith increases. Number two, reading the narrations from the life of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi wa about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about believing in Him. It is through them that we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. Let me make it clear. There is only one path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only one path. Ihdina sarat al-mustaqeem. Al-sarat al-mustaqeem. There is only one guide us onto, onto the right path. One path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There can't be many paths to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is only one path. We read in Ayatul Kursi. Allah will extract and will take him out of dhulumat. Dhulumat is a plural for, for darkness. Darknesses to nur and nur to one light, one light, one guidance, one path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a path of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad salawatullah alayhim ajma'in. Anybody who tells you otherwise is contradicting the verses of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt The only path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way that Allah wants us to believe and worship Him is the path of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad salawatullah alayhim ajma'in. We read this hadith that I'm going to recite from the book of Tawheed by Shaykh al-Saduq, page 152. Beautiful book to download. It is available to translation in English and it's online available you can download it and read it it's kind of a lengthy hadith Imam says Imam Asada states that we are the gates we are the one who work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are the one who call upon people to come and we guide people and we call people to come to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Here's the discussion that I'm going to have. Bina urif Allah. By us, Allah is known. Bina, by us, Allah is known. Wa bina ubid Allah. And because of us and by us, Allah has worshipped. Nahnu al ala Allah wa laulana ma ubid Allah. We are the one who guide to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it wasn't because of us, but nobody would have worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Path of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. No other path, no other poet, no other philosopher, no other poetry will get us the way that we're supposed to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the words of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. We see book of this philosoph and philosopher and this arif and the poetries and our scholars come and write interpretation after interpretation. The words of Ahl al-Bayt, they bring these gigantic words and terminology. 
We say, wow, they're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, what is it saying? Well, we don't know what they're talking about. Big words. Big, no, no, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam made it very simple for you and I in the way that we should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and things that we should know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way that we have to believe in Him. Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam will increase our knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believing Him. So going back, anti a'lamu billah, the knowledge, the most knowledge, when it comes to knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have it, Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha. Who is saying the statement? Amir al Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Wa abar, the most righteous. Wa atqa, the most pious. Wa akram, wa ashaddu khawfan min Allah, and the one who scares the most from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The relationship between wife and husband. Let me read a beautiful hadith. It relates to our discussion. A person comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. This, is, this hadith is narrated within the kitab Makaram al-Akhlaq. A person comes to Rasulullah I have a wife. When I come home, she comes and she welcomes me. وَإِذَا خَرَجْتُ شَيَّعَتْنِي When I'm about to leave the house, she comes and she bid farewell to me. وَإِذَا رَأَتْنِي مَحْمُومًا And when she sees me that I'm concerned and I am uh, anxious and I'm worrying, قَالَتْ مَا يُهِمُّكَ إِن كُنْتَ تَهْتَمُّ لِرِزْقِكَ فَقَدْ تَكَفَّلَ بِهِ خَيْرُكَ If your anxiety, if your, if your anxiousness is about risk and sustenance, Somebody else is the razzaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide. وَإِن كُنْتَ تَهْتَمُّ بِأَمْرِ آخِرَتِكَ And if you are anxious about your affair for life after death, فَزَادَكَ اللَّهُ فَزَادَكَ اللَّهُ حَمَّا May your anxiety increase. If that anxiety is about life after death, that you haven't done anything for life after death. So that, make, that will make you to work more and more for the sake of akhirah. فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Look at this reply. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله replies to this person. بَشِّرْهَا بِالْجَنَّةِ Give her glad tiding that Jannah is for her. She will enter Jannah. وَقُلْ لَهَا And tell her إِنَّكِ عَامِلَةٌ مِنْ عُمَّالِ اللَّهِ You are one of Allah's aid and assistant on earth. You are one of Allah's employee on earth. You are one of Allah's worker on earth by what she does. Do we see these kind of relationships within our Muslim community? Inshallah, we'll see it more often. By us learning from the teachings of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad and from the lives of Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha, and Amir al mumini Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam. We have to be re if. My life is not the way that Ahl bayt have taught us to be. I have to reshape it. If I see my life is filled with difficulties and challenges and dramas, well, I have to think otherwise. What brought this life to this ending? More characteristics of the Lady Fatima's life, Lady Fatima Zahra's life, Salamullah alayha. Her life was based on spirituality and God-fearing. Everything she did is based on spirituality, ma'nawiyyah, and God-fearing, piety and taqwa. The night of her marriage, the night of Zafaf, when she and her husband, Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, get into the room, she says, Oh Ali, let us spend the night praying and supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, we see for some people, for some couples, the night of their wedding, the night of zawaj, the night of their reception is filled with haram and music and dance men and women and DJ and makeup and tight clothes and no hijab and so on, so on and so forth. If this life is started with, when the life starts with haram, it's not going to last long. And I have seen it. 
and I have witnessed it. Her life, every decision that she made was based on spirituality and God-fearing piety. I need to work on it. Another, another example of spirituality and piety within her lifestyle. Every Friday, not only for her, also teaching her kids. Friday afternoon before Maghrib time, that is the time that she used to tell her mates to go on top of the roof. When the time comes that sun is setting, sunset, before Maghrib, that is the time that dua will be mustajab, dua will be accepted. Let me know the time, so we'll do dua. She would grab her children and she will teach them and she will do dua. How many times we have heard that she would have Imam Hassan alayhi salam next to her and she would say, okay, I'll do dua and you do say ameen. She's teaching them. That she, Imam Hassan alayhi salam said, I heard it so many times my mother pray for the neighbor than herself at the condition that she had, with the condition that she had. She's teaching, okay, care for others, serve others. As much as, so for our children, as much as we pay attention to their academic endeavor and to their academic achievement, have we paid attention to their religious achievement? I pay top dollars for bringing him good tutor and tutoring him, teaching him math and science and English. But I, did I bring him a good tutor to teach him Quran? Teach him a hadith of Ahlul Bayt Have I done my share of teaching them about lives of Ahlul Bayt How many stories they know? How many narrations they know? How many verses of the Quran they know? This is a responsibility. Ya amanu. Allah says within the Holy Quran, Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Warn them, yourself and your family of the hellfire. Another example of her life. Lifestyle based on honor, respect, and dignity, which we discussed it. Yabn Am, it's about honor, it's about respect. When we read Hadith al Kisa and the relationship and the way, Assalamu alaikum ya Ummah, O oh Mother, Assalamu alaikum. She replies, Wa alayka salam ya qurrata aini, O oh, the light of my eyes, or oh, the fruit of my life. And the respect that is happening between the conversation. Some of the conversations I see, it's not what Ahlul Bayt have prescribed for us. If we know our rights and responsibilities toward one another, and we try to fulfill it, there won't be any more challenges relationship-wise. And we keep reminding ourselves of it. Where can we read it? Action plan. Book. Treaties of Rights by Imam Zain Abidin alayhi salam. In it, he has mentioned 51 treaties, 51 rights. In it, Imam Zain Abidin says, when it comes to the spouse, akrimha, or you as a husband, akrimha, honor her. If the husband honor her wife, his wife, and the wife honor her husband, the ch children that are born within this family, they will grow up respecting the parents, and the respect will be the same. Which we have to, again, if we have not been there yet, we have to start asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking by the blessing of Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayha and their hadith and their narrations and the verse of the Holy Quran to bless us to be what Ahlul Bayt salam prescribed for us. Lifestyle based on help, service and aiding one another. Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayha helps Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali alayhi salam helps Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayha in the house. Within some culture, we see it's kind of embarrassing and shame for the husband to help in the house. Amir al Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he used to help his wife within the house. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. One day he walked in while she was cooking. Amir Mu'mini was cleaning the lentils and the beans. Amir al Mu'mineen, commander of the faithful. Khalifa to Allah on earth. He helps his wife within the household. And look at the respect that she also and aid that she aided him. I, she, she says, I never disagreed with you, and he helps. It's not that, okay, if, if, she disagree, if she disagreed, he wouldn't help. No, the relationship is a give and take relationship. Both one another, they helped raising the children. Both one another, they helped in the house, and so on and so forth. Because their life was based on what? Spirituality and God-fearing and taqwa. That is why their life was abstemious. And we must learn from their abstemious lifestyle and be content with what Allah has provided for us. We see some of the spouses within their household, they are not content. No matter what the spouse buy for them, they need more. No matter what they buy, they need more. On and on and on. There's the life a role model, a system, an example that exists. If we see our lifestyle is not working, well, let us bring this application and apply it in our life and we'll see how it shapes and how it changes to have a better life. Last but not least, beautiful and famous stories, a good reminder for us. goes under the... Uh, verse of the Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 92. Birra hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibbun. Ama tunfiqu min shay'in fa'inna allaha bihi alim. When Amir Mu'mini says, Wa'abar, that you are the most righteous, Allah says you will never attain piety or righteousness until you spend out of what you hold dear and what you love. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, you are the most righteous of Fatima to Zahra salamu alayha. Why? Because Fatima to Zahra salamu alayha on the, on the night of her wedding, she comes to the house as the wedding, as the night of the wedding and happiness. She's wearing her wedding dress. Somebody comes and knocks on the door. Salamu alaykum, alaykum salam is a needy person. Fatima to Zahra takes her wedding dress and she gives it to her. And she wears her old dress, the dress that she loved. That's why she becomes Abar, the most righteous. But these people, people of Medina, did not appreciate Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha. Did not appreciate the life of Fatima to Zahra and learn from her and what they did on the other hand. And the Masa'ab of Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha, and what Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam went through. D during these couple of days and weeks with Fatima to Zahra alayha, cannot be imagined. Asma says, it was the night. It was the night where Fatima to Zahra alayha, the, her, her soul departed this world. And it was the time that she had and within her will, she asked Amir al-Mu'mineen to ghusl her and to wash her at night. Imam came and told the children, you stay in another room. Asma, you come with me. And everybody be quiet. We don't want to wake up the people because she didn't want any of those people who oppressed her to witness her burial ceremony and to participate within her burial ceremony. It was the time everybody's quiet. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, she, while she was dressed, Imam says, Oh Asma, you come and you pour water and I will wipe and I will wash and ghusl her. And Asma says, while I was pouring water, going from head and then right and then left, suddenly I saw Imam Ali alayhi salam, he stopped. And he stopped and he got next to the wall and he placed his head to the wall and he started cry crying viciously and loud and loud and loud. I told him, oh master, what happened to you? Oh Amir al muminin what happened to you? Did you remember what Fatima al-Zahra went through? What happened that you, you tell us to be quiet? You tell us to cry slowly. Why is suddenly that, what, what happened that you suddenly start crying loud? He says, Asma, you don't know what I felt. While, while 
while I was while i was washing the body of my dear wife i touched her broken ribs and i felt the wounds and the swollen on her elbow which i she covered that from me that that showed me what she went through and the sack and the sacrifices that that she made and it was the time and that she, Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam, kefened her. And he said, Oh Hassan, Oh Hussein, come, come and hug your mother and bid farewell for the last time. Imam Hassan alayhi salam came to Imam, to Fatima al Zahra. He drops himself on, on his mother. Imam Hussein comes. He also drops himself on his mother. Mother, kalimini, mom, kalimini. Oh mother, talk to me. I am your son Hassan. I am your son Hussein. It was the time that Allah told Angel Jibra'il, told Imam Ali alayhi salam to completely take them away because angels are crying, crying for what's happening to Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessing of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam, Imam Mahdi ajrallah ta'ala faraj al-shari bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhi al-sa'at wa fi kulli sa'ah waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Oh, uh-huh.